Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 8. In this tutorial we're going to add in some code to be able to catch our falling orbs and we're also going to add uh, some sound effect to that caught orb so we know when we have actually caught it. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So everything we've done up until now is working quite nicely and whether you've advanced that a little bit further is entirely up to you and realistically you probably should because all this is is to teach you a lot of the basic mechanics of how things can work and connect and interact with each other. So hopefully you guys have got a little bit more advanced than what this currently is. So how do we make it so as when we catch an orb we can actually make a sound effect and subsequently add to our score? Well it's actually a lot easier than what you would think. And the way we're going to do it is by using something called on trigger enter. And what that essentially means is that when something enters um, the, this particular object, we're able to execute some code. But to do that, we're also going to need to set something called tags. Tags are a way of identifying certain objects to be within a certain group. So if we click on our red orb, at the top of the inspector panel, you can see that we have something called tag. It's currently untagged. If we drop down that list and go to add tag, and let's click on the plus, and now we can add a name for this tag. And we're gonna name this tag the exact same as the object itself, in this case, red orb. So this is gonna be red orb as the tag. And then click save. And then let's go to the blue and do the exact same. Click on plus, we'll have this as blue orb. And green, same again, add tag, plus green orb. So you'll see the relevance of why we use these in a bit. So now we've set those tags, let's actually assign them to the correct game object. And green, so each of those orbs now has those tags. And when we instantiate those, they'll also be assigned the same tag. Now we can use this to our advantage because when we create that script to have something collide with the platforms, it means that we can detect whether it's red, blue, or green. So let's create that script. So in the orbs folder, in the scripts folder, let's right click, create C sharp script, and let's have this as orb catch. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. And once again, we'll take this from small scale and expand it from there. Um, so I've not 100% practiced this. This is something that I'm just kind of going to go with the flow because a lot of the times working with it like this is actually much more enjoyable than knowing what you're going to type. Simply because starting small and going from there, it could change anyway. So I'm going to get rid of everything inside the class. And we're going to start with void on trigger enter. And you can get rid of the word private because it does not need to be private. And you'll notice in the parentheses here we have collider other. What is this for? This is basically going to determine what has collided with it and we're going to assign it the variable of other. So in this case, if the blue orb were to fall through the platform, uh, it will be assigned the variable of other. And using that premise, we can actually make it so as we can detect what tag it would be. So theoretically, what we could do is let's for now just play a sound effect when we've only caught a blue orb. So for that, let's add in a variable. Public audio source. And this one will be orb catch effects. And what we'll do is we will say inside this on trigger enter, and this word other, by the way, you can change that if you want to. By default, it is other. So for now, I am going to keep it as other. But if you want to change that word to orb or sphere or something completely different, just keep that in mind when you write this next line of code. So if other dot tag equals and in quote marks let's put blue 
or open curly bracket, then we do the following. And we'll say orb catch effects dot play. Open close bracket, semicolon, and let's save that for now. So what's essentially happening here is that we are only going to play that sound effect if what has collided with us has the tag blue orb. So we're now going to apply this particular uh, script to an object inside each of our platforms. So I'm going to turn the left platform on for now. And I am going to assign an extra game object in there. So right click 3D object and cube. And let's bring this cube up to probably about there. So it's just above the top of those sections there. And let's slim it down just a little bit on the X to probably about there. So this is going to be the object which catches the orbs. The rest of the platform is just there for visualization only. So let's rename this cube as plat capture. And what we can do with this now is tick is trigger. And what that means is that this will now act as that trigger for the orbs coming in. So let's apply that script of orb catch to our plat capture. And the orb catch effects, let's now create that. So going back up to the main camera, down to audio, down to SFX, let's right click and create empty. And let's have this as orb catch. So that's another sound effect. And I'm going to bring in this extra sound effect of orb collect. And you can get this on the website again for free if you head over there. And let's apply that sound effect orb collect over here. And I'm going to reduce the volume. I'm going to untick play on awake. And the last thing I'm going to do is on that plat catcher, attach the orb catch over there, and then untick mesh renderer. Now, what that means is that the object still exists. However, the mesh surrounding it is no longer visible. So this object is still there. It's just invisible when we see it in the game view. So hopefully when we save this project now and press play, So you can see that a green one has fallen there, but nothing actually happened. So what I'm going to do is that's a, at least a good test of it. So I'm going to turn that off now. And whenever we see a blue fall here, I'm going to try and catch it. There we go. So you can see nothing else is doing it. So the sound effect is working just fine, but no other orb color is triggering that sound effect. Let's try and catch a red one next, just to make sure. Uh, come on. It doesn't want. There we go. So the blue did it again. And obviously it's not going to work in the others just yet, simply because we haven't assigned anything there. So all we need to do is shift this plat catcher into the other game objects. Now, this is where things become a little bit different. So I'm actually going to enable all of those platforms on. And I'm going to take plat capture, hold control, press D, just take away that one by renaming it and then move it into the middle platform. Now, it's all good and well moving it to the middle platform. However, the object is still in the same place as our left platform. So we need to move that into the center of the middle platform. And you can see here that we can just do that by changing the X coordinate. So our original one is X zero and Y153. So if we do the same, X0, Y153, you'll see it moves into the correct position. And once again, let's do that with the right platform. Let's quickly rename. And then hopefully we can see if we change it to zero, it will do it there, no problem. So let's save that scene and test once again. In fact, I should turn the platforms off. So every time a blue orb lands, it plays that extra sound effect. Every time any other orb lands, it doesn't do anything. There we go. So it did it there and there. 
doesn't do it with the red, but it does it with the blue. So we have that down quite nicely now. So let's wrap this all up now by saying, basically, we need to add uh, a score. So we are going to work with the score probably next tutorial quite a bit. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to assign, uh, red, let's say red as one point, blue as two, green as three. And although we still want uh, the sound effect to play with them all, so I'm going to take that out of there and place it there. Although we still want the sound to play with them all, we still need the ability to change whatever the score would be. So for now, let's set this up as just saying whatever we've caught up here. So where we have uh, the namespace up here, let's add in using Unity. In fact, now I think about this, what did we do in score up data? Because we have that there, don't we? Because that automatically starts. So I'll tell you what, let's actually talk between scripts instead. I think that would be a much better way of doing things. So let's say, um, Gosh, what's the best way of doing it? I'll tell you what, let's say if other.tag is blue orb and let's copy that if statement down and again. So we'll say red is one, blue is two and green is three. So in score up data, what we'll do is we will change void start to void update. This means that this is gonna run constantly. And instead of saying score display dot get component equals uh, score 100, we're going to add in another variable here. And we're going to say public static int integer, obviously, and we'll call this um, orb, orb score semicolon. So the word static, I don't think we've used it, have we before? So the word static basically says that any other script can interact with this particular variable because it is assigned to this script. So if we want to reference this, all we need to do is reference the script itself and then this particular variable. That's what the word static will allow us to do. So all we can do here is score display dot get component text is equal to, let's say double quote and then plus orb score and save that script. So when orb catch talks to this script, it's going to tell it what orb we've caught, whether it's one, two, or three. So like I said, to do that, in these if statements, we say score up data dot, and if you scroll down that list, you'll find that orb score. Then you can make it equals one, semicolon. And then we'll do the same here, change that to two. And then same there, three. So we're almost there with this tutorial. It's everything will kind of wrap up in the end. So what's going to happen now is if we press play and start catching orbs, this number at the top will change. So it'll go from zero. So if we catch a red one, it will change it to a one. So let's try and catch a blue. Okay, we didn't quite catch that. Uh, green. There we go, you can see that changed to a three. Change to a two for a blue. One to a red, perfect. So although it's only setting the values there, it's still working as intended. Next tutorial we'll probably actually have all this adding up to have the score that we would require. So the next thing we need to do uh, is to make whatever object we have caught disappear. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can destroy the game object or you can set it active as false. Uh, it's up to you whichever way you want to do it. But as long as the object disappears from our scene, that's realistically all we need to do. Um, so what we'll do is after all of those if statements, we'll say other dot set. In fact, let's actually do this a bit of a better way. So just to kind of reiterate what's, what's actually happening here is we're saying that, yeah, this is, th this object here is this. So we have to kind of think of it logically as this particular orb needs to disappear. And like I say, 
Uh, if we I'm trying to think of the best way of doing this. So if we destroy other rather than set active, because now I think about it, if we set it as active, it's still going to exist in the scene. So I'm thinking if we destroy it, it means it goes completely. So let's now try this out. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so it doesn't want to actually do it as we intended. Um, what we'll do for now is we can leave it as it is, to be honest, because realistically we can recycle some of these orbs. And I think, actually, if we catch the orb, we could, we could actually make it... Do you know what? Now I think about it, maybe we should change the order of all of this. We could actually be really clever with what we do here. But I think for now, what we'll do is we'll leave it because we can recycle some of these orbs, I think. So we'll probably start looking at that next tutorial as well. It's up to you if you actually want to get rid of those orbs. Um, I guess, honestly, it's entirely up to you. But as long as we've got the basics of this working, that's all we need. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to add in the actual score itself. So we're going to have the score add up over the course of time. Um, we probably will add a bit more to the UI and I think we'll also add in a bit of music as well, to be honest, and just see what it sounds like. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.